Hello students and welcome to today's English class. Today I'm going to start a new chapter and the name of the chapter is The Thief's Story. This chapter is written by Roskin Bond. This is the second chapter in your supplementary reader, Footprints Without Feet. Before I start the chapter, let me introduce you to the lesson. A young boy makes friends with Anil. Anil trusts him completely and employs him. Does the boy betray his trust? Well, the story is about a 15-year-old thief who changes his name every month to stay ahead of the police and old employers. This time, he kept his name Hari Singh. The other person in the story is a 25-year-old writer named Anil. The thief meets Anil and asks him if he can work for him. The story unfolds on how the thief betrays Anil by committing a theft but reacts later on. This is a very nice story and the name of the author is Ruskin Bond. Let me introduce you to Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond was born on 19th May 1934. He is an Indian author of British descent. He lives with his adopted family in Landor, Missouri in India. The Indian Council of Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of children's literature in India. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992 for Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra, his novel in English. He has also received Padma Shri in 1999 and Padma Bhushan in 2014. So let us start with the story, The Thieves' Story. I'll read the paragraph. I was still a thief when I met Anil. And though only 15, I was an experienced and fairly successful hand. Anil was watching a wrestling match when I approached him. He was about 25, a tall, lean fellow, and he looked easygoing, kind and simple enough for my purpose. I hadn't had much luck of late and thought I might be able to get into the young man's confidence. You look a bit of a wrestler yourself, I said. A little flattery helps in making friends. So do you, he replied, which put me off for a moment because at that time I was rather thin. Well, I said modestly, I do wrestle a bit. What's your name? Hari Singh. I lied. I took a new name every month that kept me ahead of the police and my former employers. After this introduction, Anil talked about the well-oiled wrestlers who were grunting, lifting, and throwing each other about. I didn't have much to say. Anil walked away. I followed casually. Hello again, he said. I gave him my most appealing smile. I want to work for you, I said. But I can't pay you. Let us understand the story. How does it start? And I'll also explain you the paragraph that I just told you. But before I do this, let me introduce you to the meanings of few words. I, the word lean means thin. Flattery means insincere praise. Modesty is in an unassuming manner without any pride or arrogance. Employer is a person or organization that employs a person. And grunting is to make a low, short, guttural sound. And appealing is attractive or interesting. The story starts from the point where the two main characters of the story meet, Anil and the thief. The thief in the story is the narrator of the story as well. The thief says that according to him, he was pretty good at stealing. Anil was watching a wrestling match when the thief approached him. Anil was tall, lean and easygoing man. Now the meaning of the word easygoing is relaxed, and open-minded. The thief had not committed any theft in the past few days as he did not get a chance to do so. He thought that Anil would be a good man to steal things from. So he surveyed Anil, he looked at his physical appearance and had an intuition that Anil might be a prospective victim. He can gain Anil's confidence and then swindle him. Will he be successful? We'll find out as the story will unfold. So, Hari Singh thought about getting comfortable with him. Then, 
Thief commented on Anil that he looks like a wrestler himself. He said that to win his confidence by flattering him. So the reason why he spoke in this manner by complimenting him was one to break an ice between him and Anil to initiate a conversation and what a better way to initiate a conversation by complimenting a person who you would like to talk to. And that is exactly what the thief did. To this Anil replied that even the thief looked like a wrestler which offended the thief because he was very thin at that time. The thief in a very humble manner replied that he did wrestle a bit sometimes. Anil asked his, him his name and the narrator lied that his name was Hari Singh. The narrator used to change his name every month to escape the police and his ex-employers. So really, the thief was very intelligent. He knew that if he has to stay away from the grasp of police, he has to keep changing his name and the place where he commits burglary or where he commits crime. Then they started talking about the well-oiled physique of wrestlers whom they watched on the screen. The narrator did not have much to say as he did not know much about wrestling. As Anil was leaving, the narrator again approached him asking him, that he wanted to work for him. The narrator approached him with the most appealing smile, the most friendly, the most interesting smile that he could. Anil told him that he won't be able to pay him for his work. So I think we have understood the introduction. We see that the two primary characters in the story are Anil and the thief. The thief happens to be the narrator of the story. So Thief is very experienced, he's a 15 year old boy and he also has great intuition. He can read faces. He has become so expert in his profession that he knows who could be his next victim. Off late, he was not very successful. So he was, he did, he was not living a very successful life. He was not able to get into the confidence of a person rather rather uh, get a person's confidence and then try to swindle him. He was not able to do this. So he set his eyes on Anil, who he thought would be a prospective victim. Anil was 25 and the thief initiated a conversation by complimenting Anil. But the kind of compliment that he gave Anil by telling him that he himself looks like a wrestler kind of surprised Anil. He was amused by this compliment because he was thin and lean fellow. He was tall. From no physical appearance of his, he looked like a wrestler. Now, Anil also gave the compliment back to Hari Singh, here the thief, the narrator, by telling him that he also looks, you know, he also has a physique of a wrestler, which kind of took the thief by surprise because he he had no personality of a wrestler. But never mind, then they kind of started speaking about uh, the wrestlers who were fighting, and after some time, Anil leaves. We get to know one more aspect of Hari Singh, or should I say the thief here. Let's not call him Hari Singh right now. Let's call him the narrator or the thief. He follows Anil. And when Anil kind of finds him following him, he turns and uh, kind of greets him and the narrator does not mince word, he does not take much time by telling his purpose. He tells Anil that he wants to work for him and Anil is very clear. He tells him that he does not have money to pay him. Let's move on. Okay. I thought that over for a minute, perhaps I had misjudged my man. I asked, can you feed me? Can you cook? I can cook. I lied again. If you can cook, then maybe I can feed you. He took me to his room over the Jamuna sweet shop and told me I could sleep on the balcony. But the meal I cooked that night must have been a terrible one because Anil gave it to a stray dog and told me to be off. 
But I just hung around smiling in my most appealing way and he couldn't help laughing. Later he patted me on the head and said, never mind, he'd teach me to cook. He also taught me to write my name and said he would soon teach me to write whole sentences and to add numbers. I was grateful. I knew that once I could write like an educated man there would be no limit to what I could achieve. It was quite pleasant working for Anil. I made the tea in the morning and then would take up my time buying the day's supplies, usually making a profit of about a rupee a day. I think he knew I made a little money this way, but he did not seem to mind. Let me introduce you to the meanings of few words. Misjudged here means form a wrong opinion or, or conclusion about someone. So when you form a wrong opinion or conclusion about someone that is misjudged. Balcony is a platform enclosed by a wall on the outside of a building with access from the upper floor window or door. That's your balcony. Terrible means extremely bad or serious. Patted is to touch quickly and gently with the flat of the hand. Pleasant is giving a sense of happiness or satisfaction or enjoyment. Supplies here means a stock or amount of something supplied or available to use. So Hari Singh had not expected this reply. The reply that Anil did not have money to pay him. So he did not know initially how to react and thought to himself that he had misjudged Anil. Maybe this time his intuition was not right. Maybe this time Anil was not his prospective victim. So he thought that Anil had a lot of money. That's what he thought, but then he misjudged. The narrator then asked if he could feed him, to which Anil instantly asked if Hari could cook. Hari, as a compulsive liar, he lied again that yes, he knows how to cook. Anil told him that if Hari could cook, then he could feed him. Then both of them went to Anil's room, which was above Jamuna's sweet shop. Anil also gave Hari, rather Anil also told Hari that he could sleep in the balcony. The narrator said that the food that he cooked that day must have been terrible one. Why? Because Anil had to give it away to a stray dog. So Anil could not eat that food. So we know that your thief lied about his culinary skills. He did not know how to cook. Right? Then he told Hari to go and sleep, but Hari decided to stay for a while. Now Hari's smile was so appealing that Anil could not stop, stop laughing looking at him. And after some time, Anil patted affectionately on Hari's head and told him that he would teach him how to cook. He also promised him to teach him how to write his name and also told him that he would soon teach him to write full sentences and how to add numbers. Hari was grateful for what Anil had planned as he knew that there would be no limits for him to work once he would know how to read and write like an educated man. Now Hari tells the readers that he in fact enjoyed working for Anil. Hari used to make tea for him in the morning and then used to go out to buy groceries for the day. He would also keep one rupee in his pocket every day from the money that Anil used to give him for daily groceries. Anil knew that he took a rupee every day but he did not mind. Anil was absolutely fine with that. So let's rephrase this entire paragraph for you. So the narrator was kind of confused. He wondered that maybe he misjudged Anil to be a wealthy man, a man with lots of money. But looks like, as we all know, that he has already told that he was not very lucky for some time and he may have even run out of money. So it would not be a bad idea if Anil could feed him he would stay with he will stay with Anil till the time he finds a new prospective victim. So he asked Anil if he could feed him. 
and Anil again answered his question with a question. He asked him if he could cook. And we see that the narrator lies again. He's a compulsive or habitual liar. He tells him that, yes, he could cook. He is lying so that he could get an employment with Anil. At least he would have shelter above his head and food to fill his belly. So Anil said that, fine enough, if you can cook, then I can feed you. No harm. And Anil took him to his room over Jabuna Sweet Shop and he instructed the narrator to go and sleep on the balcony. At night, the food that the narrator cooked was horrible. It was terrible. And how do we know that? Because Anil did not eat that food. Rather, it gave, he gave the food to a stray dog. And he instructed him to go off and sleep. But the narrator simply hung around, smiling in the most attractive manner as he could, till the time Anil you know, pitied him and he couldn't help laughing. So he pardoned him for lying. Later, Anil patted him on his head and said, don't mind, it's okay, it's fine. And he promised him that he would teach him how to cook. And he also taught the narrator how to write his name. And he also said that he would soon teach him to write whole sentences and to add numbers. And the narrator was quite grateful to Anil. Because the narrator knew that once he could read like in, read and write like an educated man, then there would be no limit for him. He could achieve anything in his life. Furthermore, he also kind of agrees, he kind of makes a confession that he was quite happy working for Anil. Anil was not a fussy boss. So he would make tea for Anil in the morning and then he would take time to buy the groceries or supply for the days. And he would make a profit of about a rupee a day. And Anil, sorry, uh, Hari Singh tells, his, tells the readers that Anil knew that he was making some money this way. But then Anil did not mind that Hari Singh was keeping the change. Why? Because Anil was not paying him for his services. So Anil was fine with it. He never questioned, he never asked, he never bothered. So we are going to end our lesson today.